Oh, guys, so maybe many of you guys have seen this video last year. Ty Lopez scam that got over 500,000 views. This guy literally watched it last year, and we ended up flying him out here into the area that we live in right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the truth and the bullshit behind making $100 a day, making $1,000 a day. What about internet marketing and make money online and creating side hustles? is real and what's actually fake and also getting more of like a transparent view of what actually takes to succeed not for somebody to see like some flashy kid with a lamborghini on the screen but real people with real stories that want real results not to get this fancy lifestyle but to make an extra 500 an extra 1000 dollars a month maybe for single parents that have like a daughter this is the video to kind of like unleash everything in a more transparent way we have my guest for you jason who literally saw this video a year ago now he's here normal average human being so if he could do it anyone else could do it this is the intro with that being said Hello guys, welcome to the Mike Fistil Show where we uh, break down the bullshit advice that is on the internet and instead give you guys the most authentic way where we teach people about life, business, and relationship advice and that's really it. So my guest for you today is my friend Jason Rhodes who, it's actually really interesting, literally a year ago you sent us a video saying that you'd want to basically be a producer for a TV show that didn't actually happen yet because a lot of like things happen. But I mean, you ended up working for free for a bit and then you were then thrown into the underground world of almost like the internet marketers seeing like the behind the scenes secrets mm -hmm. of how people are making like millions behind the scenes. And that's like the guest for today. So really quick, everyone. I'm really excited, man. I can hear it. I'm really excited. And one of the biggest things, uh, the reason why I wanted to get you on is we're basically going to like YouTube some stuff on how to make money online. Mm -hmm. um, then I really want to know your viewpoint on the advice that's currently given right now on, for example, YouTube versus the advice that you're now getting when you were now surrounded by mm -hmm. bombarded, everyone. bombarded mm -hmm. with knowledge. <laughs> But yeah, what was it? What was that like, dude? Like uh, this past year, it, before we actually go into whatever title this is, how to make hundred dollars a day as a broke individual, how to make hundred dollars a day when you have no money, how to make a thousand dollars extra part time side hustle. We're gonna figure it out later on. But how? Like, what was going on before? That's a great question. Um, it's funny to start a third career later in life after being in the workforce for twenty five years, doing a million things, but you realize that you, you start watching YouTube, you start watching all the people. I mean, they call it the shiny object syndrome and there's a million ways. And, and I was watching all types of sales and marketing and the ads, I guess now I've learned, they get targeted to you based on what you watch and what you're interested in, what you subscribe to. And I've been like on a three year journey watching all different types of people um, promising you or guiding you on all different ways to make money. And I, I was in an offline business. I didn't do anything online. You're also like a Hollywood producer, right? I was a Hollywood, uh, Hollywood producer, primarily mm. of television shows. Mm. Um, that was his in. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> how I created a job out of thin air that didn't mm. exist. That's mm -hmm. how we met. Um, ironically on that story, which was funny is, when you guys were soliciting um, contestants to be on the show, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, I applied to be a contestant. And for 48 hours, it was quiet. Didn't hear a word. And it's almost like when you get like some sort of test from a doctor and they haven't called you in two days mm. and you're starting to freak out and your brain is going like, what could it be? <laughs> and then you guys put out a video of, hey, we had like 1,200 submissions in the first 48 hours. Thank you. I'm like, fuck, there's six <laughs> slots. Mm -hmm. What can I give these guys? And I'm like, at the end of the day, I didn't care about being on TV. I've always been behind the camera. I don't care about that. But 
I wanted the knowledge. And, and I, I'm a big follower of Grant Cardone and, um, He's always like proximity to power, proximity to power, and no proximity to power, little bitch. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, okay, these guys. I I literally did like a logical calculation. I know a lot of people work on emotion. I work mm. on pra- pragmatic pragmatic thought. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's too early. I haven't had coffee, but anyway, I was literally thinking, okay, it's almost like a sales job. Like, what's my angle in here? You know, what do these guys need that they can't get and they can't necessarily buy? Mm -hmm. And I just thought to myself, well, they don't know what they don't know, which is a reality television show, which I thought was a great idea and, you know, still is a great idea. It is not an extended length YouTube video. And these guys also are making a bunch of money. I thought at the time, and now I know for sure that's totally legit. And I'm like, there's no way if these guys are talking about systems and outsourcing, there's no way I can see these guys sitting in an editing bay with a hundred hours of raw footage, making no money, trying to cut a show together. They Mm -hmm. don't understand how to do it. They know how to make great YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. but it's a completely different animal. So instead of like, being a fanboy, I decided to like almost school them on my video. And I was like, look, this is a, this is a great venture, guys. I, I, I applaud you. But you guys are out of your mind if you think that you're going to do this wow. without a professional. And I sent that off, went to bed. I woke up. There's a message from Mike. Hey, um, <laughs> do you think uh, maybe you might have five minutes to jump on a call with us and, you know, check it out? Should we actually play that video? You have it? Yeah. Press, uh, go to messages. So I was like, that's how you Where's get them the on the phone. Uh, just on that one. Jace, um, uh, no, no. Yeah. Or no, no. Chat. Like right there. Uh, right next to his uh, following. You see that on the right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right there. Yeah. That's yeah, so And just scroll all the way up because I'm just like sending a bunch of like every B&Bs. Actually, before we even get into that, yeah. I, I think it would be even more like uh, beneficial. Oh. To uh, like before you actually got into this, if yeah. we like pull up on YouTube so we could kind of uh, take people oh, through right this here. entire journey. Yeah. Um, before you sent that. Yes. And before we actually play that, what were the things that you were actually typing in on YouTube? Like how to make $100 a day, like how to make an extra $1,000. Let's pause this Hi, for guys. this. <laughs> oh boy. Um, same haircut. Uh, I was not, I've never been motivated by like, quick money okay which is kind of why i gravitated towards you and then towards gary and uh, the is the ty lopez a scam which thousands of people have found both of you guys on that's how i found you guys and i was like okay he's a dude he's my age he's not a 20 year old kid standing in front of a lambo or a jet mm-hmm. and all that I, it, the money is not the motivator that what what is the motivator is there's an opportunity it's real. Mm-hmm. It's never going to go away. It's transformational like electricity or indoor plumbing. And, mm-hmm. you know, I just thought, okay, what is the skill set that I need to become an expert at? And the money will come. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't worried about how do I get to 100 a day or 1,000 a yeah. day in the first 60 days. I don't care about that. What I care about is being a professional and an expert because I know that so few percentage of people in the world mm-hmm. have any idea how to do this. Like for instance, I had, I had a company, I had a sales company and I had the Mac doctor and anytime I had an issue or I bought a new piece of hardware, I, the guy would come in and you try and teach me. I'm like, I, I don't need to do any of that stuff. Just, just fix it. Just make sure everything syncs and works. You don't have to tell me I need to concentrate on my business. And I thought, you know, what was the number that you and Chris talked about? There's like 27 million small businesses. So I'm like, yeah. they all have pain in ads. They all have pain in customers. And most of them are trying to just keep the doors open, their employees, their customers, trying mm-hmm. to do a good experience. They don't have the desire nor the time or the energy to go out and learn all this stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why I think, you know, we can talk about it later, but, and, and I, I'm not an affiliate. I make no money. I'm just saying this from my own personal experience. I'm still going through the training now. I think it's so simple and easy. I think it's almost more simple than anything I've ever seen. Oh, because you're in DA University. I am. He's in <laughs> DA University. <And laughs> let me just say, if you're watching this, 
I, 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 with all due respect, if you didn't pay the six hundred dollar bump to get Chris as your mentor, <laughs> you are crazy. Wow. Link in the description. I mean, this dude is for real. He'll never do this again. And I mean, I, I'm sure I can say this. This is a beta group. He just started. He needs f real success stories. He's genuinely, mm -hmm. and I know him a little yeah. bit. I'm not friends, friends with him, but I know him a little bit. And I know people who know him really well, like you, and they all speak very highly oh, of him. Oh, he's amazing, yeah, man. He's like, and he's yeah, like our father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I look forward to it, but I need to be a winner in a testimonial mm -hmm. form. But I want to be because he really, he's fixing a major problem. Mm -hmm. And the people that are going through it, like every time I watch something, I'm like, oh, why didn't I find this 10 years ago, five <laughs> years ago? Like I'm, but then I'm like, forget it. World is abundant. Let's move on from here. Mm -hmm. But as I watch that, because, you know, I've, I also am training in affiliate marketing, which I also believe is legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's getting a little bit more difficult. You have to do a little more work. There's a little more challenges. And, you know, with Facebook, you have no control of the algorithm. So there's always like, I always trying to find a business that I can fully control that outside mm -hmm. things. Like if a customer leaves, an employee leaves, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, so affiliate marketing is totally legit. I, I mean, I work with people who make seven figures and more. And I mean, I see it for myself. And again, I'm not promoting anything. I have no interest in it other than that's what I found in my three years of research of doing mm. the shiny object syndrome. I've gotten down to this. It's a great business model. We can go into that if you want. But the thing I love about Chris is not only is he a great teacher and he's thought of everything, but it's so flip and simple. Mm. And the 99% of small business owners just in America, forget about Australia and Asia and South America and everywhere else, mm -hmm. Europe. But they they are like me. They're middle-aged people, they're business owners. They have families, they have responsibilities. They can't do one more thing in their business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you can be their angel and come in and do it, and by the way, you're so confident, and I love that Chris does this, is I'll, I'll just drive leads for you for free for two weeks. Just so you know mm. that I'm for real because I would imagine that they're getting hit on by marketers everywhere promising the moon. Like Just like online, we're going to yeah. see that everyone's really? promising the moon. How do they know if you're the real deal or a waste of their time or their money? And so I love the idea like, look, I, and I, I haven't made my pitch yet to them, but I, it's going to be as simple as, I'm sure I was a small business owner. I'm sure you get hit on a lot. Let me just do it at my cost for two weeks. If you don't like it, God mm -hmm. bless. You know, thanks for the opportunity. But yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to change your business. Yeah. And it's like so weird because it's like uh, it, it's what business initially was back in the day yeah. when, you know, you didn't have the Internet. You literally your reputation was your business. Mm -hmm. If you owned a bakery and you like just didn't support your customers. You the bread was stale, and mm -hmm. then you didn't really mm -hmm. care about yeah. what they were actually eating. You're going to be out of a business. Yeah, you know the internet's like really weird because you could literally hide behind a really shitty product by just having really good sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. But there's like no absolute scale, and exactly what you were talking about, like why I feel like the only people that I'll ever promote are like really the people that I um, met at that table in Singapore, the five mentors that like changed my life mm -hmm. forever was because they literally think of the customer first and then the sales and marketing are just, you know, like addition stuff of things. Um, but that's, that's insane. Like I totally forgot that like you were in there. I wanted to go um, more into this, but it's like the, the personality that you are, the human being that you are, it's just like so relatable. Mm -hmm. You know, for someone maybe watching this or listening in that, you know, you were literally in their shoes. You were watching YouTube videos. You literally saw a Ty Lopez scam video mm -hmm. that just popped up with like, can we actually like pull that up? I know exactly how you got to me ad wise now that I can, I can trace it back. How did I, how did I get you? So like I said, I had a sales business offline. I did yellow page ads. Mm -hmm. I was around then and, um. And I also used to, in the, in trade magazines, I used to also put ads and then they were gonna mm -hmm. do online ads or if there was like a conference, you could pay mm -hmm. extra money for a table. I mean, that's, and it still goes on today in a lot of industries. Mm -hmm. But I, it's funny is I never had formal training in sales. I come from a family of salespeople. My mm -hmm. mother actually was the greatest sales person who ever lived. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm like, I need to be more perfect. In 2008, when the whole world imploded, I'm like, okay, this is survival of the fittest now. You know, mm. businesses are closing, people are getting laid off, no one has any money, but the show must go on and only the best. Like you couldn't fake it anymore. Like you could be, and no disrespect, but you could be a fake real estate agent in 2004, five oh, yeah. and six, and mm. you could make great commissions. <laughs> and there's a million other industries that you could say that about. Same in my industry. I mean, 2008, I had an unbelievable year, 2009, I paid more in taxes in 2008 than I made gross in 2009. I'm wow. like, okay, something's got to change. And I have to have the humility to say, maybe there's some things I can learn. And that's the other thing is you, whatever, whatever it is, online, offline, this type of business, that type of business, you have to be curious. Like I, mm. I admit, I, I got a little comfortable, got in my early 40s, I'm, you know, or right around my 40th birthday. And I was like comfortable. I've been working for a long time. I always made money. Hardly ever did I have a job. I always earned my own, you know, mm. I ate my own kills, so to speak. And and then all of a sudden, no one wanted to talk to you. No one's replying to emails. No one's taking your phone calls. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be a better way. And maybe now is the time since I have plenty of free time because no one's buying to go learn. So I, I consume Cardone and Cardone University. Again, I'm not an affiliate. I'm just a user. And I was on a path <clears throat> of, I need to, I need to, Learn. So I, I started with, you know, Tony Robbins was obviously the all time, but yeah, he's, he's emotional. Like the gateway drug. He's the gateway drug. Mm. But like, I love guys like Jim Rohn, mm. uh, Zig Ziglar. Yeah. But, yeah. but then I was like, I need more modern. And I, and I, and I really gravitated. There's a few out there. I also respect Jordan Belfort's sales system. I do respect that. But, but Grant really resonated with me and I'm like this guy has totally deconstructed the entire sales process um and and coming from the Hollywood world I'm like this is like a movie it's like me going into a writing class and deconstructing the first second and third act and the story arcs and the character arcs I'm like this makes se I always have to have something logically make sense to me in order for me to be immerse myself in it mm -hmm. to have curious, but I'm always like curious about something. I got a little fat and happy in my business and then all of a sudden the light switch went out and then I, I, you know, said, okay, I got to learn. So Grant Cardone studied him, studied Cardone university and some other products. Then all of a sudden he does growth con one and I couldn't go. So I streamed it live and I got the recording and I still watch it. And then a man by the name of Russell Brunson, mm -hmm comes yeah. on the stage. Never heard of him, never heard of click funnels. Again, not enough uh well, technically I did sign up and I'm an affiliate, but I I don't promote. Um I don't know, I think I have one affiliate and it's a buddy, but I, I'm not promoting him in, in any way, but I do think of the world of him and his team and I I really think that these guys are going to be the Microsoft. Mm. Like I think one day when you get a laptop or a desktop, I think they have the ability to have it pre-installed mm. like office. I, I really believe that strongly mm. in those people. But anyway, I, I watched his 90 minute webinar on stage and I was like, this guy has something. This guy's totally it. And he is the equivalent to me. I, I've never thought about it like this, but now it makes sense. Grant Cardone is the modern day version of Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar. Mm -hmm. Russell Brunson is the modern day version of all the great marketing people who you know, started with like a newspaper ad or, mm. you know, something like that. So, um, Dan Kennedy, Jay Abraham. Yeah. I mean, he is, yeah. Jay Abraham's also He's a savage. pretty phenomenal. Um, billion dollar marketer. Yeah. 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 I mean, Billionaire. to have dinner with that man and to just yeah. ask him, but anyway, but Russell Brunson is the type of person who he is devoured everything you could possibly know and has distilled it into the 21st century of what works now. So same thing with what Grant did with the sales process, the modern day did. And so as soon as I saw Russell, I'm like, I don't know half the stuff that he's talking about, but something inside of me is screaming, this guy's right. Mm -hmm. And he's on to something. And so I immediately switched from offline sales to I need to learn everything about online. And the good and the bad about ClickFunnels is 
it's a SaaS, which I didn't even know what that word meant until about two years ago, but it basically means you can do anything with it. So first you have to decide, and then that turned on my addiction to the online marketing and trying to learn everything, but also like there's so many ways. So then I went through the whole, before I got to you, this is like six or eight months before I got to you. So SEO and drop shipping and e-com, and he kept coming up with all these great click funnel, two comma club people. And it's like, it's like sometimes the last person you talk to when you ask for advice is the best advice because that was the last person and you agree yeah. with them or make sense. And so every time I would watch, you know, Dave Woodward or any of these guys like interview someone, I'm like, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm <laughs> going to do drop shipping. I'm going to do e-com. <laughs> and what I've come to learn from masters and experts like you guys making serious money is they all work. Mm -hmm. It's finding the right person. And it's then immediately putting on blinders and don't listen to anything else until you figure it out. Mm. And then maybe you can take things from other people and apply it. But I, I, I went on like a one year journey between GrowthCon 1 and GrowthCon 2 studying. And I, I think I'm more like your typical viewer or students and you guys, and Gary's the same way, Rob's the same way. They've been doing it for so long with all due respect, sometimes they forget what the experience is like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know they're constantly talking about it and thinking about it, but to actually feel it, I think I'm closer. And I think mm -hmm. that's why I'm valuable out here is because I can kind of be their avatar for their middle-aged student or complete newbie, could be young, could be older, newbie to internet. And um, so they all work, but you literally have to find something that speaks to you and then shut the world out. Mm. And I was a professional and that this is where a lot of people, I have more free time. I, I don't have kids or a wife. So I had a lot of free time and I stopped watching sports. I stopped listening to music. All I did was watch YouTube videos when I was home, stop watching television, movies. I'd watch when I was home. I'd listen on podcasts when I was in my car or walking my dog. I mean, every minute that I had available, I was just trying to learn. You can become a professional student and do nothing. I'm totally taking responsibility that it, 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 I killed a year. I learned a ton, but then you're so filled in your head with all these ideas that you become a deer in the headlights. So I've had to now readjust from not knowing and being naive to having curiosity, to having humility to learn, to then overlearning too <laughs> many people mm -hmm. and then like stopping. Mm -hmm. And so... So when I was doing that for the year, I started watching all the marketing guys and I don't need to list out their names, but there's some really interesting people out there that are talking. But I believe it was me consuming tons of ClickFunnels and Russell Brunson and Funnel Hacker Radio, I think it's called. I have no affiliation with them. I'm just, I'm telling you, I get a lot of value out of them and I, I, I just love learning from these people. And as an older person, you have to have humility to learn from someone younger, like mm. 20 years your junior and be like, okay, I, I can learn something from these people. And they, they have great people. But anyway, your ad came up. I was watching Ty, um, who I do not know. And some of the stuff I really like, some of it, I, I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't go into it, but mm -hmm. I, I definitely got sucked into Ty and I think he's a great marketer, but your ad came on between, I think it was a combo between click funnels, consuming a ton that, that was like my top two. It was Ty, and, and Russell, and then your your uh, came on your ad came on about Ty Lopez scam. So maybe it was Ty. Mm, this one right here. Yeah, that one. And uh, man, I've watched that like a dozen times. I'm and I. Home. Yep. Yeah, I'm literally like recording out of my phone, <laughs> like for yeah. the audio. For those that are listening on podcast or watching, Ty Lopez scam. Ex business partner reveals the truth. Look at that view. To be mm -hmm. I literally um, moved right next to my mentor. My so we're going to go actually visit him and find out exactly <laughs> how Ty is able to become successful. Look at that camera, dude. And, uh, yeah. How you guys start implementing it in your business. So you can start living the life you want, right? With that being said, let's go ahead over to Ty Lopez's ex-business partner's house. Dang. Yeah. I had to move uh from that place because people just started showing up in the doorstep are you serious yeah <laughs> <laughs> they were just like oh my god 
Um, but yeah, it was like really weird. What, what about this uh, really spoke to you? Because you, you've been consuming content for a year, like most people point, do. At that point, I'm up to three years now. I started three at years. 16, yeah. Yeah, so you've been doing this consuming, and then it's almost like as it, after this video, it kind of almost sparked the chain of events that got you yes. to here in freaking Bali. So like, what about that? Because most people could watch, actually most people, even like listening to this, will mm -hmm. just consume, consume, and they'll consume, and they'll take in, take in, and they won't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, you know, it's funny. Something just dawned on me I want to share because I think people, quite frankly, I'm like, I was sitting there listening to you, and I'm thinking, if someone didn't know me, what would they be thinking right now? And are they be thinking what I would be thinking, which is... Actor, mm -hmm. I don't he's know an actor. He's from Hollywood. What's his angle? I, I'm I'm a skeptic too. We're we're yeah. Midwesterners, both from Chicago, and and, and that that totally hit me because I'm I'm literally watching this and I'm thinking about like I I've never thought about the last year until this moment. Yeah. So it's all kind of flooding me with all these things. Mm -hmm. I I will say one thing. For me, and I'm I know people make six, seven, eight figures on. Ecom and drop shipping and FBA and all those things. So I know those are legit, but I was coming from a business where I put my entire life savings into inventory that I had not sold. I didn't have any kind of intellectual property or value add or anything that you couldn't buy. It's like a pack of gum. Mm -hmm. You can go into this store or that store, or that store. It, it's going to be a three cent differential but I was going on relationships and networking and taking people to lunch and golf and, you know, fishing mm. trips, like trying to build relationships, but mm. I had nothing. I had a huge line of credit at a bank that cost me a ton. I had all kinds of insurances, liability, general liability and workman's comp and health insurance for everybody. And, because I, I just didn't believe in 1099ing people mm. to cut your cost, but it cost me a, a fortune. And uh, I, I took all the risk, had an office, bought all the equipment, had the salespeople, and and I was still working as you know seven days a week, and the risk was enormous. And when you know the the industry traditionally, um, the industry was very successful. And they were doing 100, 150% gross revenue. And so you could afford all this stuff. By the time I got into the industry in 2006, it was maybe 20, 22, maybe 25% gross. After 2009, it fluctuated between 8 and 12% if you were lucky. Insurance went up for all those insurances. Everything has gone up in cost. Um, and yet... The, the, the revenue did not go up. So the profits collapsed, everything cost. And, and, and you know, Grant and other people talk about this is like, at the end of the day, you're working for free just to keep the doors open. You're worried if people are gonna leave you or you're worried on the other hand of, should I keep them um, if they're not producing? And I just, I was already so sick of all, of having to prepay inventory having to be on the hook with the bank and you sign personal guarantees when you're a small business, you're not like Coca-Cola where you mm -hmm. can walk away from that if things go bad. And I was on the hook for so many things, had no life, I you know, couldn't sleep well, just stressed as can be. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's millions of business owners who could think about this. And so I was already primed for, I don't wanna own my own product. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna deal with this stuff. I don't wanna front the money. I don't wanna be, you know, I don't want, the risk. I don't need to make a thousand percent return, but I want something that makes sense to me. Again, mm -hmm. being pragmatic, what is a fair return mm -hmm. and how can I limit my risk? Because as a young guy, all I thought about is making money. Mm -hmm. As an old guy, I think about preserving money and lowering my risk because I don't want to work till I'm 65 or 70 or 80, where a mm -hmm. lot of people who are living a long time and don't have money saved they're in that fear, which, and in, in my opinion, I think most people online over 30 are not looking to become multimillionaires. They're just looking to find something either to replace their current job mm -hmm. or they're looking to make money to make life a little easier. I don't think everyone, 
you know, I qualify people. Now I do some sales with the guy I work for and I talk to these people. I haven't heard one person say I want to get rich. I talked to a guy the other day and he said, I work in corporate. I got a great job. I make a lot of money, but I work six and a half days a week. I disappoint my wife and kids all the time because I say, I'm sorry, I can't go to this activity. I can't go to that activity. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've, I, I just can't do anything. And he's, and I, so, you know, we always say like, what's your why? Why do you want to learn this program? And he's like, mm-hmm. I have a dream that I can take my kids to school, come home, work all day, and then be there at three o'clock when school gets out and take them home or take them to ballet or wherever they're going afterwards. He's like, that's all I want. Mm -hmm. And I wanna be able to know that if God forbid I died, I can take care of my family. And I was like, how do you not wanna help a person like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like, so guy wasn't talking about a car or a big house or I want to go on vacations. He's like, it's, it's primarily just people who just want an easier life. Life mm-hmm. is, it, it was way easier 20 years ago. And with all the tools, it actually feels like it's harder. But, but this, the, the online thing, so the, I'm, I'm on a tangent. No, that's fine. This is what this yeah. show is about. <laughs> this is a show of trying to like figure out an SEO thing to hack to yeah. like going through tangents. Yeah. I, and again, I know people that are in SEO that speak mm-hmm. very highly of it. Um, but for me, what is the shortest path between A and B? SEO to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys know better than me, but from what I've learned is it is a long time. It's a long-term yeah. strategy. It can make you a ton of money in the long run, but you got to wait. Mm-hmm. And as opposed to there's no shame or immorality mm. or you know, it's not unethical to buy eyeballs, to buy customers. What can I get now? And ad buying and whatever platform you are most comfortable with is the best way to do it, Mm. in my opinion, from everything I've seen. And with everything that that you've been just saying, because that's that's like literally the most relatable thing. You know, that's why we're trying to create this podcast because, you know, even though we may think we know Mm -hmm. what is out there, Mm -hmm. the only one that's really going to know out there, like in terms of like relating wise and what they're actually going through are people that are actually living it. Yeah. And this is what I want to bring to light. You know, these thoughts, cause there's, there's literally like a Becky that's 40 years old living in Oklahoma, Mm -hmm. single mother wants to make an extra $1,000 a month for her like single child. Mm -hmm. And she's just watching like all of these, videos online on like how to make 50 to hundred dollars an hour or how to make a thousand dollars every single minute of your life or how to make like a million dollars while you poo. And it's like, it's not like relatable. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like back to even like the Ty Lopez thing. Cause you came in from that. You were just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You saw a bunch of videos, you were consuming it. You had this pain of, you know, building a business that you were just working for free. Uh, you had no idea how to mitigate your risks and you literally watch content for three years. Mm-hmm. What I'm curious about, so I could almost like deconstruct what's going on in my brain yeah. to better further um, serve people mm-hmm. and give them the most authentic message, the authentic tools and uh, techniques to get them to that extra 500 or extra $1,000 a month is you ended up watching this Ty Lopez scam video. This was the one, right? Yeah. What about this was like different than anything that you consume? Because literally this is the one, the moment you watch this, I feel like that is the reason why you're actually sitting in front of me today. And not just that, but like- For sure is the reason why. Yeah. So what about this? Because you've been watching for three years. You're watching Funnel Hacking TV. You were um, watching Grant Cardone. You're watching all these things. And yeah. then here's this like Asian guy that comes out of a bush with wearing the same thing every day. Yeah. Just- I, <laughs> I, um, Look at those armpits. And it, it, it is funny because I normally don't gravitate towards high energy people. Yeah. Because if I don't know you, I usually I lean back a little bit. And I, I'll probably admit I did a little bit, but I'm like. Most people do. I'm like, I'm going to give this guy a shot. Something feels different. I don't know. I can't explain it. But the Tyler like, has glasses. <laughs> it was. It was, in like, seven, it was NLPing you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, maybe he's read a book in the last year. I'm going to listen to him. So, mm-hmm. but, you know, when you and Gary were having a conversation, and again, the same way that I don't care about the immediate money. Yeah. Believe it or not, I mean, Bali, 
looks beautiful there Jakarta. and all that. Jakarta. Yeah, Jakarta looks good. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know Indonesia that well. But anyway, whatever that is, that greenery, it looks beautiful. That did not attract me in the least bit. Mm. I'm only looking at the information. I don't care about those beautiful doors. Like, mm. as I'm, I'm just literally, telling you. Like, I knocked on that and they're like, he was waiting the entire <laughs> yeah. time. He was right Moving there. into cracks. Yeah. But it's funny. I oh, God, I haven't watched this in like three months. Gary get lost so much weight. Oh man, he with looks uh, amazing. Chris's uh, like just fitness protocol. Yeah, and keto. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that was that was insane. Yeah, he's <laughs> like something. a different guy since I saw that video. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like literally a year ago. Yeah. And Tyler was next. So, so what about this again? Like, was it the long form? You said you you didn't really like the greenery or the flash. No, no, no. It wasn't that I didn't like it. I'm just, I'm trying to tell you my personal experience. And this yeah. is the first time I've deconstructed it. I was not attracted. Like a lot of, I think a lot of people are attracted to what's in the backdrop. Yeah. The Lambo, the car, this, that. The Wi-Fi I, password. Right. <laughs> I'm literally. Oh, don't man. look at it. Don't look at it. Don't tell. Yeah, uh, intention to detail. I, I, um, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> um, I, I literally, I'm not, I think it's because working in Hollywood and I've yeah. seen it all and done it all. Like. You're like green screen. Nothing. nothing All these Indonesians yeah. are green screens. Yeah, that's CGI'd. <laughs> that's CGI. Those Indonesians weren't even there. But it's like, again, not being the fanboy, I wasn't like, oh, they're in a tropical place and, you know, and yeah. all that stuff. It was just like, it was <laughs> it was the information that I yeah. was searching for. And I, you guys were on this couch right there. Uh huh. I was wanted to ask, why if you have a camera, why are you holding your phone? Were you stripping the audio for Yeah, the, the audio. Yeah, so everyone's like, oh, you know, I need like all these like fancy equipment. I literally used my iPhone to get the audio and it was literally a microphone. Yeah. And some of my best interviews wasn't with all of this like setup that you yeah. see like right now. It's literally with like my iPhone and uh -huh. a G7X camera. Well, I, I will tell you that this conversation on his couch. Yeah, here on my couch. You have it, the uh, ukulele there. Yeah. It changed. Always. It changed everything that this video, this moment where you guys talk for like a good 20 minutes back and forth. And I'm like, okay, here's a dude from the Midwest. Like me, here's an older dude kind of like me. Mm -hmm. And when he explained the, the affiliate marketing business model and I'm, I knew in my, my, my gut just cause working for so long, I, it can't be this easy, but it makes sense to mm. me and I don't care. If it's a little more difficult, I'm going to figure it out. Mm. Um, as a salesperson, you know, it, you, you got to sell. But at the same time, he wasn't really selling. He was just kind of explaining. I think also the fact, and I understand this a little bit more, the way, look at the way you are looking at him without getting <laughs> gushy, but I could tell that you had respect for him and it wasn't hype because mm -hmm. what I try to do like when I'm watching something that I'm editing, I don't watch the person talking. I watch the person looking at the person mm. because that's the realness. Your subconscious, and again, this is just from studying and working, you're not thinking about what your face is doing. Your face is doing what you subconsciously. <laughs> and, and you were giving him some real reverence. And I was like, okay. Hearts in your eyes. I was like a little girl. <laughs> yeah, you were a little bit. and But, <laughs> but I could tell that like when you talked about him changing life, I could tell that was real. And mm. now that I'm here, I totally know that that's real. And, you know, look, I, overall things, and I, I, here's a funny thing. I have one friend in LA who was like, I don't care what it takes. You, you gotta go, just get on the plane. And I, most of my other friends back home who I love greatly and, you know, care deeply about mm -hmm. me were like, yeah. You're moving to a foreign country. You don't really yeah. know anyone. You, you've had like two Skype calls and a in-person meeting and you're changing your life and selling your car. But I, 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 it's like a convergence of, I don't like my industry. I don't like running this business. I haven't traveled in 20 years. I've just worked for 20 years straight, mm. you know, and like going to Florida or wherever, Vegas, that's not really a vacation. And I'm like, what's it all for? Mm. and you know some other things happened in my life and i was just like i need a radical shift i need my mm. own version of like a midlife crisis mm. and i need to do something and and every year i write my new year's not only resolutions but goals like mm -hmm. big things i want to tackle and 
for like 10 years, I would just move it from the previous year to the current year of mm. live mm. in a foreign country for three months minimum. And I had never done that. Mm. And I just thought, okay, if, and, and my dog had just passed away, he was 12. And I'm like, okay, I, this is the first time as an adult, I have no responsibilities to anybody but myself. And planes fly all the way back to Los Angeles. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, um, I'm going to do it. Mm. So, but this conversation and then my subsequent conversations with the two of you on Skype, and then I, I mm. met him when he came back uh, yeah. to the States for briefly. I was like, I'm going to do it. Even if I don't, even if this thing totally implodes on me. And we're just sociopathic killers. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Like, I'm organs. not going to tell these guys where I live. Yeah. Just we were trying to tell you where we, where we live. We're that's like, what true. if this guy's a sociopathic <laughs> killer? We just think, like, that's the funny thing about the internet is you just think the person you're talking to is some type of, like, person that's going to harvest your organs. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it, like, I tried deconstructing this because from my point of view, yeah. we had no idea what we were doing. And, actually, I had Bali Belly, and then he had Bali Belly, so he didn't <laughs> even want to do this. Yeah. Right? We were literally just throwing up out of the butthole, basically, for, nice. like, days. And um, it, it was insane because... This was the first time, because I made a bunch of five and 10 minute videos because yeah. everyone on the internet, they're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna make this five, 10 minute video, um, teaching people how to make $100 mm -hmm. a day, teaching people how to make $1,000 a day. But I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna do a 40 minute video while everyone's doing five or 10 minute videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to script it out, I just wanna have a conversation that I normally would have with one of like my best older friends mm -hmm. and mentors and just capture that and just like shoot the shit. And it's crazy because we like like the way everything's set up it's almost like it just aligned perfectly because for example um from this one video alone it generated five hundred thousand dollars in sales but that was like 90 days later mm -hmm. you know because in this moment in time if i was gonna deconstruct i feel like why this did so well is because in this moment we actually didn't care about selling anything because yeah. we didn't have anything to sell mm. um it was literally just how can we have an authentic conversation kind of mm -hmm. like this right it's like there's no script there's no like acting there's no like oh you know like oh he told me to say this no, it wasn't a grand plan there was no you, grand plan you had that with chris so you had that great conversation with chris and yeah chris and there was nothing right didn't yeah. you tell me that yeah there we was... didn't even know what to, like i didn't even know he had a product for sale that i could mm -hmm. be an affiliate for yeah like it, it was just closed and i actually didn't know that he was having a jv launch until like a week before and he's mm -hmm. like dude i don't know if uh like he told me, I was like, dude, why did you tell me this earlier? Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, okay, like I'll launch it. And I'm like, I, I went through, like talked to the affiliate managers and then we like did a joint deal. And from that alone, because of the value based on this video, because we weren't focusing on selling, mm -hmm. it actually ended up making the most sales. Yeah, And it's the exact same thing that happened with Chris. It's like, I literally message him. He comes out of the gym. He's just like chilling. Everyone's like, not really excited we're just like talking like normal mm -hmm. human beings and from that that generated an insane amounts of money and it changed not just like so many people's lives but like the lives of everyone that's close to me you know team members that are now becoming like family members and it's all because of kind of like what we're trying to do right here is just breaking through the bullshit that that's online and getting to what it is and that's just authenticity and learning from people that were just in the same results right yeah. so you watch this, yeah, and then from that conversation, we're like, okay, we, we wanted to do like our, the the problem with me and Gary is we're so idea guys mm -hmm. that we'll have the crazy amounts of ideas and we mm -hmm. won't know how to create systems. I was hoping you would talk operations, about operations, and literally that's why Hanson yeah. is the homie because he is like <laughs> the medicine man when it comes to Asana and Slack, and I'm just like I can't even freaking function. Medicine um, man. <laughs> but basically, what happened from this is we decided to create like a reality TV show. Because I don't know if you knew about this. Yeah, we want to create like a reality TV I show. I heard about it yeah. from, I think, no, I heard about it from Jerry. Yeah. yeah. And and we we're like, okay, we'll, we'll do it. And then we're like doing it and we're like managing everything. And we we're just dying because when you're not in your zone of genius, it takes from you. Mm -hmm. And that's when you sent us this video right here on the producer video. Mm. We pulled that up. Let's just watch oh, it. It's embarrassing oh, now. My second submission to you is an alternative to being contestant on your new reality show See? what 20 years ago when reality tv first came out that's 1.5 x i was a part of it for five years serving as a copywriter and a producer soup to nuts starting from pre-production 
the story idea, casting, interview, shooting, B-roll, What date was this on? Can you check that? Tearing down hundreds of hours. May or June of 18. Into individual. One episodes. subscriber. And I know how to do all the hooks, the storylines, and the compelling characters that studios oh, it doesn't say that's weird. want to see. Yeah. I believe your mentor by Millionaire's reality TV show is extremely compelling, very exciting. There is nothing like it on TV. Was this in Chicago? Or the internet. No, and Los I Angeles. Like That's on my deck. Any way that I can to help me. You sell that house? And your dream come true. We're watching I, the video. I gave up the place. Said. Yeah, I, I was renting, but yeah, I gave it up. This idea is I sold my car. So my Is this first take? One loved. and done? You're going to see be honest, be authentic. No. no, as a matter of fact, there's a wall. So I, I have a table and I've got a, a bunch of books stacked so I can get my laptop. It's funny as I work with all this great equipment, but I don't own any of it. It's how the studio owns all of it. But I literally use my laptop and, uh, and I taped note cards on the wall behind me and I had bullet points of how I wanted mm. to, what everything that yeah. I wanted to cover for these guys. This is probably, honestly, I, I made two different videos. One was a contestant, which was two <laughs> days before, and I, that took like 12. I just, I didn't like the sound of my voice. I'm nasally, yeah. Midwestern, yeah. everything. I'm not looking in the camera. Mm-hmm. Everything that I used to get paid to train other people to yeah. do, I couldn't do it It's myself. different on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Mike's a natural. You don't need to like, no. tell anything. Just, YouTube like, was made for him. But so yeah, that was probably like the third. You got to see the time. ending though. The ending is the funniest. Oh, no. You got to go to the ending. I don't even remember. And Shark Tank and all those business. Like all the way. Yeah, like in the last uh, fifteen seconds or ten seconds. Oh man, I don't even remember. Oh dude, this is this is this is this is what made me want to choose you. Really? Oh that. To make it happen. Oh man. Did you say? Get it from the right people. Because. I will take massive action. <laughs> I will be focused. Oh, you hear that? I and feel I that. will not quit until your dream is on the network of your choice. Oh. Keep an open mind. Give me a shot. I will do everything it's like American in my Idol. power to get it done. Hmm. I love the idea, and I want to be a part of this any way I can, in front of the camera or behind. I just want to be a part of it, and I can help. Please use me. Thank you. Wow. Wait, wait, no. Uh, can you go in the beginning? Which one did you do the intro? Was that the contestant one? I, I mean, I sent you two. Okay, okay. Let's look at the previous one then. Let's look at the contestant uh, one. Oh, my God. Is it? Oh, let me just say, as I'm sitting one. here, like, wanting to <laughs> run away. Dude, you know what I love is that you made a four or five-minute video. You yeah. made two videos and however many takes. How many people out there, they want something, they want a job, they send an email or maybe a text and mm-hmm. then no reply and they like, oh, I tried, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, what? That's incredible. It's like, amazing, man. Like, it, you, you, if it wasn't my story, I wouldn't believe it. Like, that's, and out of all of the submissions was how many people sent two YouTube videos? Well, there was 12, a lot 10. of videos because the advice, what the, the, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh no. Hi guys, it's Jason Rose from Chicago. Why should you pick me? Why do I qualify? Where's my card on shirt? Three steps. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. He did the intro. That was you, man. <laughs> okay, we can pause that. Yeah, no, no. Um, that is so, awesome. I'm selling the salesman. What can so, I tell so you? So the premise was uh, they had to, the assignment was send us a video for uh, just just so we could see uh. their. Um, personality why right? should we pick you yeah why okay. should we pick you so everyone's like sending us these videos everyone's like telling us their stories and we had like so many um and we didn't have a system to actually view them all mm. uh but then he was like hey uh i saw that you needed help for like the actual systems of things because you guys are just two like idea guys and then you sent that second one which is the most amazing thing because i think what separated you from everybody else is when everybody wants to like work with you they immediately want to Take, 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 take. Mm-hmm. But you almost did like Chris Winter's approach where you're like, let me just work for you for free for I think it was like a couple months, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we wanted to see, of course, that you weren't going to like uh, just harvest our organs. So like <laughs> we, we sent Gary out and then he like scoped you out in like San Diego or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, but then essentially, because you were the one 
out of like thousands that actually were willing to prove the value you could do by actually what you could do. But you were and like the, then we ended up like flying him all the way over to Asia where you just lived and just worked for free. And the value that you Still did here. was literally what then got you to be kind of like the modern day Napoleon Hill for internet marketers, basically, and think grow rich, surrounded by some of the top internet marketers and learning from the best while also getting paid, while living your dream life, while also getting surrounded by like some people would have to spend like 20 or 50 grand to get access to. Mm -hmm. All because you met, made one four minute video. Sometimes big risk pays off. Yeah. But was it even like really that much of a risk? Like if I was going to be like, hey, you know, we're opening up a position for like an internship. We need like video editors and video photographers. And all you got to do is like go to, for example, like MikeVasilo.com forward slash hotline and just submit why we should pick you on like this right here, this Dropbox thing. Um, and you just like send a video and we just like check that out. You know, even though thousands of people might be listening or watching this, they'd be like, oh, I'm never going to get picked. So they're never actually going to mm -hmm. submit their thing. They're never going to submit it and they're going to choose to stay in their shitty situation in a depressing job or in a business that has too much overhead or alone or stuck or depressed or maybe their parents think they're crazy or their wife or their husband mm -hmm. or their kids think they're crazy or maybe they don't have time for their kids because they work six and a half days a week. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to work for free. I want to get paid like right now. Mm -hmm. I want to get paid right now. And even the ones that want to do it and like, oh, you know what? I think I could... I'm either coachable, I'm learnable, I have the willingness to learn and the willingness to accept change, like freaking moving to Asia and just uprooting your entire life to mm -hmm. get surrounded by us. They'd be like, oh, you know what? Like I would never get picked. So they would actually never even apply just for fear of failure that if they did, what if they get rejected, mm -hmm. you know? And there's like almost or less Or what if they get picked and screwed up? Yeah. Yeah. And there's almost like this less competition the higher you get up because more people are more afraid to reach out. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of people that reach out to me um, selling stuff is way more than the amount of people reaching out to me doing free stuff. Mm -hmm. But the amount of people that come into my life that I'm creating long-term opportunities for that I want them to succeed and to grow in fulfillment, in significance, in love and connection, in um, their own like money in their bank account that makes them happy. Mm -hmm was literally because people came in working for either free or people that, um, what's it called? Like worked really, really cheap. And those are the people that when they show value, they're like, well, fuck, how can I create the best situation for them to just grow and to shine and to yeah. love what they do and to support their family? And most people wouldn't ever like go to that Mike Vizzi.com hotline and like submit something to see how they could add value to like this growing operation. But what you did, what separates you from everyone else and why I think you're the most badass and also why you give me some of the most amazing advice as well. Like you should be a life coach, right? For like the internet marketers that uh, don't know how to, you know, go into their greatness is everything was going wrong for you. Mm -hmm. Your business was going down. Your dog died. You were stuck with this insomnia and sadness and depression in this place that's literally designed to teach you to buy things you don't need to impress people you don't like in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And you literally sent one four minute video and that four minute video at that moment was the thing that changed the course of your life forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really am motivated by and I've heard you talk about it before, but I, I've been thinking about it for a long time. I'm really motivated by the, the deathbed thoughts yeah. of, did I do everything? I mean, I, 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 in college, I love blues traveler. And basically the, the, I'm paraphrasing, but the, the phrase is like, nothing's going to matter in a hundred years. Mm. And so other people's judgments and all that sort of thing. But I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I read like a year ago, I was just thinking about it on the way here. They say, they've studied this, that when people buy a lottery ticket, they know without a doubt they're not going to win. What they're paying for is the day or two or three days that they get to live out wow. the fantasy mm. of what am I going to do with a half a million wow. dollars? I'm going to buy this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do that. They're literally paying, it's almost like a drug, like their brain gets to just sing and dance and it gets to escape whatever problems they have in their life. And then, oh, I didn't, and then the next time they do it again, it's, it's like an up, down, up, down. And I can completely relate 
to that. I mean, I have been in positions of, man, when is this going to end? I'm just taking a pounding every day, you know, r- right and left to the face. Like, when's it going to end? And they're going to move on to someone else. And I always, though, believe that my best days are in front of me. And I also know that nobody's going to make it happen but me. And so my desire to succeed, and I don't mean in money, I just mean in life and being happy and proud and, you know, helping people and supporting people and all that sort of stuff. Again, it's not the toys and all that, but just like, Mm. you know, we, we, we talked about this like a month ago, like someone saying to you, maybe it's selfish, but someone saying to you like, and you changed my life. You changed the course of my life. Like a teacher that you had in fifth grade or 10th grade, and you still remember their name and all that. Right behind true unconditional love, helping people, especially strangers where you have nothing in return. You just want to help because you have advice that could possibly help. And then they come back to you later and say, you changed my life. It's very addictive. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't going to, so if there are people, I've never heard of this before, but if there are people who are wondering that, the only guarantee is if you don't do anything, you can guarantee that you're not going to change. That's for sure. And, you know, if it's not this thing, maybe it's the next thing, but you need to build off of taking chances and being totally okay with something not working out. And I, I hate the word failure. Um, I think it's overused and I think it has all negative connotations. And, and this is more recent in my life, but I really try and try and turn everything into a positive, the way I think about things. And I also try and think about everything is abundant. And it's really like, I've taken courses before um, where it's like something happens in your life. Mm. It's an occurrence. It's, it's a noun. Something happened. Your brain gives it the value one way or the other of is it a good thing or a bad thing? My business imploding at the time was a bad thing, but it opened me up to this whole world. Mm. And I'm a thousand times happier now. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I'm studying harder now than I ever did in college because I really love this stuff and I Mm. see the value of it in the future and there's so many opportunities. I mean, it's a gift to mankind. Mm. And so I'm super excited. But if I was still making comfortable money, not great money, but comfortable money, I would have stayed in my comfortable life. So whenever I'm going to do something, the more it makes me scared, the more I do something a little crazy because that's where something special can happen. And I'm all about like, I don't accumulate stuff, although this ukulele is pretty cool, but Mm -hmm. I accumulate the thing that you can't take from me, which are memories and experiences. So if I ever have money, I want to go scuba diving. I want to go do something I, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that forever is in my brain. If I lose my, my iPhone and my computer and my cloud account goes down, you can't take my memories. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I submitted that video, I'm like, the odds are they're never even going to watch it. I never heard from the other one, but I took my best shot. I left it all on the field. I told it how it was. I sold the salesman. I tried to market the marketers. I gave them something that they can't buy. It was the f- that got us. It was the f- but I tried to emulate you. I was mirroring you. That was my mirroring technique. But okay, I Jordan Belfort. But here it is. Here it is. I'm sitting in front of you, and everything has changed. Wow. And I'm super happy. I'm down 25 pounds. When I'm driving around on my moped, I just like have a ear to ear grin. Mm-hmm. There's really not a bad day. Yeah. Um, I just I can't believe. It. And it's funny. Is so I'm getting a little sentimental because it is coming up on my one year, and I've been so busy that I don't think about it. But it's mm-hmm. it is incredible. I know. It what's your what's your one year? When is it? November fourteenth. I Ooh. stepped onto the property mm. first time. So and it's the two day because you leave on the twelfth in the states, but yeah. you don't get here to the fourteenth. Yeah. But the funny thing is. I've been talking so much about how this has changed my life. All like I have chronic neck and back and shoulder pain and it was all stress and tension. Mm -hmm. I mean, like everything has released. Mm -hmm. Everything is relaxed. I sleep really well at night. Like I'm just happy for no reason. Um, 
And I've been talking about this so much that I just found out last week that my sister's like, you know what? I put my apartment up for sublet in New York and I'm going to buy a one-way ticket and see what happens. Mm. And I was like, wow. that's it. I mean, I really, that's the only constituency I really care about yeah. at this point. And, you know, and my, you know, my family's moving here. So mm. it'll be very interesting to see two roads is on this, mm. in this place. <laughs> but what, uh, what was going on through your mind the moment? Like, you're like, man, these fuckers are buying me a plane ticket and I'm going to go over there. What was going on through your mind the moment you landed and you literally saw Gary and I just like running around and I'm just like freaking loud and obnoxious, just like, yeah, what's going on? And, you're, and Gary's just like, hey, yeah. Like, what was going on? I mean, I was, again, just being honest, I was wrestling. Well, the first thing was is at first, and it was a logistic thing I, I come to find out, but at first they wanted me to front the money to get here and all that. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. If you guys want me out. And so, and it got delayed. He was, he got sick. And so it got yeah. delayed. So that was the thing. I got hired. I sent the video in May or June, got hired in June or July. And then I had to wait. First he got dengue. Mm -hmm. Then he got, um, then he got sicker. And, and so I got pushed all the way back to November. Was it like a handshake agreement or? I mean, it was a tax, but yeah, yeah. it's not like I'm going to yeah. take him to court. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I just, I, I, I hooked my brain on this is my opportunity. I created out of thin air, and I'm not going to let go of this thing no matter mm -hmm. what. Yeah. And so I had to learn to be patient. Well, here's the part of the story you don't know. Mm -hmm. I love this. <laughs> so only, only a quarter million subscribers, right? Um, so I, we had he came out of dengue he hadn't heard about the other health issue and he's like this is it it's moving forward i said okay and he said all right well, look for a ticket find the right flight you know we'll we'll take care of it and all that and at the time my landlord was like hey um rents are going up i want to and i i either need you to leave or i need you to sign a one year again mm. wow and and i still hadn't had like a solid, I had the text from the guys, but I mean, anyone can send a text. Everything is getting pushed too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. It wasn't like in the U S where you can get like an employment contract. And yeah. by the way, I hadn't been an employee in 15 years before this yeah. gig. So it was like, yeah. there was a lot going on. But, um, again, my friends, most of my friends were like, dude, be practical. You know, if this is a little crazy, even for you, you've done some crazy, I've always taken what crazy they really things. Saying, like sign a three year friends? lease, yeah. get the discount. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> what were your friends like really saying though? Cause I remember we had this conversation and some yeah. of it was like actually like almost so negative that you just needed to escape. Right. I wouldn't say it was so negative. Cause again, it came from a, a place of, of love. love and protection. And I mean, these are 30 year friendships. So, mm -hmm. I mean, these people yeah. walk through fire for me. So, but it was just like, I'm the, I'm the guy in the, everyone has a group of friends, guys, girls. There's always one person who's just a little bit out there. And <laughs> it's like, I'm the guy who, you know, went to, you know, a comedy school in Chicago and started performing. And then I'm the guy who moved to LA and did stand up for 10 years. Well, I'm like, I'm, stand -up? I'm always the guy who's doing something that no one else would do. So yeah. now I'm the guy who would drop his life and move to Asia. Yeah. But again, as far as I know, until you can prove to me that there's an afterlife and I believe in it, but until you can prove it to me, this is the only ride we get. Yeah. And I'm going to do everything crazy or not. Mm. I mean, what's the worst that going to happen? sleep in a car. I've already done that several times throughout my life. So that doesn't scare me. Like what is the worst that can happen? And so I always like swing for the fences when there's like an opportunity like this. But so anyway, my landlord was pressuring me and I totally understand that that's her business, but, and I was trying to not put too much pressure on you guys. Like guys, I, I'm shutting down my business. I'm putting my car on eBay like I couldn't, I knew I, cause you, you guys wanted a one year minimum commitment, which is the, the time that you need to like pre-produce, produce and post-produce a show. And I'm like, I can't let my, my baby sit in a garage. It'll die. I'll kill my, the, you know, my car. Someone else needs to drive this thing. It's a classic car or whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm moving. Mm -hmm. And so at the time he was like, you know, should be like two to four. That was the joke. Like 
two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks. <laughs> and it went from like June to November. Wow. And then my friends are saying to me, it's just, it's not going to happen, man. You got to, you got to accept the reality and e either naivete or just holding on to the dream. I'm like, I know you're right, but you're wrong. I know you're right, but you're wrong. This is going to happen. And in the meantime, my one friend in LA is like, I don't care what anyone says, you're going. Nice. Oh, even if, oh yeah. Even if he doesn't write you back, you are going. Yes. Uh, and you're going to find these guys. Imagine, gonna imagine gonna if you didn't have that one their, friend to like just, yeah. like, oh, it, gonna, it'd be so much harder. Yeah. Thank you, to find Chad. these guys and harvest you, their Chad. organs. Yeah, but he's like, he's like, everything I feel for you, 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 you got to do it. Has he come out yet to visit? No, I, and Bring he's got to come out in the up. summer. Yeah, he's, Bring he has, I, oh, I would, I will, meet for him. sure. Yeah, he's, uh, he has a young family, so, but I. Bring all of them out. He's coming out <laughs> next year, for sure, for sure. And, um, but, so I gave up the place. I couldn't get a short-term rental, and I'm like, all right, I'll just live in this dinky LA hotel, which by the way, a dinky hotel is like yeah. 120 bucks a day. Mm. And it was like a garbage hotel. I don't even know the name of it, but I wouldn't want to promote it because it was disgusting. <laughs> but I thought it's two weeks. I, I, I can do two weeks. Two, four, six, eight. What? In the hotel. In the hotel. Were you working at this time? I was, no. I, I, I took all the money, shut the business down. Cause again, I thought it was yeah. going to take a while to shut it down. You got to shut down the bank accounts. You got to cancel the bank note. You got to cancel the insurance. So like I was taking all that time to like get my life in order, eBayed my car. Then I didn't have a car in LA. So now I'm doing like Ubers, and Uber. not, not bus, but Ubers. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> come on, whoa, 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 come on. Or Chad would come pick me up. I was <laughs> Thanks, like a mile Chad. from him. Yeah. So, um, but no, and it turned, and then I started to, like eat like crap there's like no food around and i was i just my weight started pushing up mm -hmm. then i broke through two bills which i had never done before mm. and now i'm like what is going on yeah and and then when i was talking to somebody they're like oh you know if it cost you i don't even know what it costs thousand three thousand a month for a hotel at a hundred bucks a day or something like that twenty five hundred yeah. three grand um plus food and all that. So they're like, you could basically live for 1500 bucks, super cheap or 2000, you could be super comfortable. And I'm like, why didn't I go sooner? But it yeah. was, it, again, it was the two week, two week, two week, two week. Yeah. But finally I, I, I started getting like a little more defined and I'm like, okay, these guys need me more. And so I said to them, I'm like, okay, here's what I want for me to come out. Cause they're like, now we're ready. Now we're ready. And he was on, on an upswing health and, you know, emotionally, he was super excited. I'm like, okay, fine. I got to swing the pendulum my way or I got to be able to walk. I'm like, I want two months in advance and I want the business class ticket in my account and then I'll book it and then I'll come. And they did it. Wow. So I'm like, okay, damn, they called my bluff. Now I got to go. And, uh, but I'm like, again, what's the worst that can happen? Thanks, and, Chad. Yeah, thanks, Chad. Chad. My sister was supportive Chad. too, uh, not to leave her out, but- uh, What's your sister's name? Joanna. Joanna. Thank you, Joanna. Thanks, Joanna. Thank you, Joanna. So, Chad and Joanna. Joanna and Chad will always be loved. And they're always like your biggest like supporters and cheerleaders totally. when you're out here, you know? Totally. When they're like, yeah. yeah. yeah so whenever you hit wins, they're the first ones mm. to be so ha authentically happy for you. Totally happy, but I don't want to diminish the other handful of people that weren't from California that have come around and are super happy. You know, Thank you, Bob, Becky, Jerry. Right, exactly. Sam, Sam, <laughs> I've like lost 25 pounds. So then you arrived. So, yeah. what, what was your experience now? You're, you're like in this new land. I was hesitant, but mm -hmm. but I was there. Yeah. The money was in my account, so that's real. The house that he was shooting the videos, that's real. Uh -huh. Both you guys were there. That's real. Holograms. You've got a real Mike's real abs crew. Were there. Like, oh, those those are real. abs are <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> um, like, oh, no Photoshop there. No, no, not I'm at all. I'm just like this fast piece of shit. Like, <laughs> hey, man, I free to put. It was all like CGI. Instead of a fat suit, yeah. you put on a six pack suit. I Gary's think. actually black. <laughs> 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 they did look like green screen on his face for trust. No. I, I wanted to establish with him that I wasn't a fanboy of his. So I think the first thing I said to him is like, "Listen, yeah, fucker, do any of your shirts <laughs> come with sleeves? Are you Ooh. allergic to sleeves? Like, because it was just slow jab. To yeah, me. I mean, I'm sure it's a little jealousy too. But, <laughs> but anyway, no, we got right into it. And I mean, everyone were, was pros. I mean, they 
where they lacked in my area of expertise, that's fine. But in terms of like, no, they were getting stuff done. They were pumping it out. You think like in terms of content, uh, but no, these, everyone was like working really hard. And I, I'll tell you, I work harder now mm-hmm. than I did back home. But again, it's like things that I really enjoy doing. So it's not really work, but mm-hmm. I will say, cause I need Hanson on my side. He'll, he'll feel me more than you in this is there are a lot of people who have amazing ideas. They're super creative. You and Gary are definitely two of them and come up with this, you know, great ideas and content. But then there's a practitioners like Hanson and I who actually have to get the shit done. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have no idea how much time it takes, how much effort and research and, you know, things happen and Mm -hmm. it's, you know, software crashes and the upload speed is forever. And Mm -hmm. like, you know, We've got like a hundred bucks, but we want like a helicopter shoot, you know, over the rocks, over the water, CGI with greens. Can you get that done? And um, we need it tomorrow. So, but there are people like everything's, us. Everything's today or tomorrow. Everything's today or tomorrow. So When's it due? As Hansons. soon as possible. Right. The Jasons and Hansons of the world. Yeah. What's the budget? Yeah. What's the and, least amount we can? Yeah. Have? What's the <laughs> least? Yeah, and how fast? Um, so you and your camera, and you're gonna edit. Um, I guess you would need like three three minutes. Just someone to drive you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. I'll go. Ju- I'll go check you a, a big orang. <laughs> <laughs> so will it be done at the end of this cappuccino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Just let but, us know when the, everything's set up. Yeah. So you need people <laughs> like us to make. Your I have to ideas. do my breath work. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I gotta go to yoga class. Can it be done in ninety minutes? Oh, oh, this is just like affecting my energy. (laughs) Yeah, uh, can you just like move the light a little bit and just Mm -hmm. like okay, focus on (laughs) that. But I will tell you that as much as sometimes we curse people like you, it actually is a great skill set because we get things done quickly. Mm -hmm. We I don't have time anymore nor energy to think about all the reasons why I can't, I should, and what else is going on. Oh, I'm not feeling it today. All, mm. all the things that you say that people who yeah. are considering, I, I really feel like, I, and I've read it on Instagram. It's not my credit. And I, I'd love to give the credit to the person, but basically they're saying like all the stories that you come up with of why not, why not, why not? It It's, it's just stories. It doesn't actually exist. And, and, and Tony talks about this too, is you don't have time to worry when you take action, meaning like when you're in motion, even if you're not where you want to be, even if it didn't work, even if you ran an ad and it flopped, even if you start a new online business, it didn't work right away. If you applied for something, they didn't write you back. Mm. Just being in perpetual motion yeah. mm. is it, it's, it, it fuels you. Something changes in your brain mm. and you start feeling better about things. And I think that it's kind of like, when I was younger, I was totally afraid to walk up to a woman, you know, or a girl when I was in college, totally afraid of that. Mm. I would rather get on a stage of a thousand strangers on a, with, you know, a hot light in my face Mm. and try and tell jokes and totally bomb and feel the room turn on me. And it, it's the worst feeling in the world Mm. I'd rather go through that than walk up to like maybe one because there'd be no witnesses, <laughs> but like when you are two, three, audience. four women, I, I couldn't do it. Really? I just couldn't, mm. I couldn't do it. How am I going to look? I'm going to sound stupid. They're mm. probably not interested. Like I'd come up with all this other oh, probably boyfriends. Oh, it's just, they're out having girls night. They don't want this. I'd mm. come up with a million things. And yeah, I'm sure there's other guys on the other end who would like, I'd rather talk to like 17 girls in a row than get on stage. Mm-hmm. and bomb with jokes in a mm-hmm. room full of people like that's someone else's nightmare yeah. you know well maybe it's because they're looking me in my eye as i'm bombing talking to another person um which instead of on stage most of the audience you can't see yeah but um i, I don't know what that is i even on stage you feel separated so mm-hmm. um but then again yeah so but there is no drug or anything out there that when you actually hit a good joke nothing can touch that feeling of live feedback mm. and making strangers not like jerry seinfeld he's got we're gonna have you tell show. us jokes like one of these Dude, one of chris's uh, i also dinner. used to go to the gym but you can clearly mm. see that doesn't happen anymore either but but anyway i i feel like if you just uh, later in life the trick was i didn't get mm. any better at talking 
to women, but I wouldn't hesitate. You know, it's like that movie with uh, what's his name, the guy who plays uh, Will Smith, Matt, Matt, Matt Damon, talks mm. about that. There, there's some movie, and it's a great thing. He's like. Three seconds or five seconds of courage. The three second rule, right? Yeah, and just it just start getting your feet mm. moving, so you don't have time to think. Any of these opportunities, pick one, mm. ride it till the wheels come off. If it works, mm. great. If it doesn't work, learn something and find something else. But it's really like, again, through my experience, consume a lot. What actually feels real. Pick something mm. and put blinders on. Stop watching everything else. Mm. Stop reading. Just follow the one thing because in all likelihood, that one thing, whatever it is for you, mm. it's going to work. The only thing that's going to determine that is really you. Are you going to work? Mm. And so the difference is, is like I was willing to sell my car which I loved. I was willing to move out of my place. I was willing to move into a crappy hotel mm -hmm. and gain 20 pounds. And like, and my friends would always say to me, like, haven't you had enough? Don't you want to tap out? And I'm like, why, why tap out? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's going to happen. And if it didn't happen with them, it was going to happen. And by the way, I would have moved out here. Maybe I would have moved to Thailand because I heard that there was a bunch of online people yeah. there. You I was going to go find it. them. Whether you would have figured something out. That's, I would have like figured it out. You mm -hmm. burned the bridges like what they said in Thinking Grow Rich. And yeah. I really want to say two things. Number one, I don't know what you're talking about on this fear with girls because we went on a double date yeah. and you were a savage. Remember? Remember that? <laughs> At the lounge, you were like doing the <laughs> dancing, and I was like, "Gary you, was what's happening?" Destroy the footage, right? I'm like, I'm like, yo, Jason's working hard, and then he's just like salsa dancing with this like uh, Asian woman, and then I'm like, <laughs> um, so you are actually that pretty. Was my birthday, you're, you're pretty happy birthday. Um, that, was, that was my. That birthday was like the that first night. time I think we hung out. That right? was. That yeah. was. Yeah, that was pretty fun. And the second thing, I definitely understand what you're talking about with because dating and business is all the exact same, and it's like Sama our Sama. our brains are wired to see kind of like the danger in mm -hmm. life right so when there's like a girl if you don't say hi to her of course in a respectful way within like three seconds and literally if you take the most beautiful woman and you just looked at her and you weren't allowed to talk to her the natural things that arise in your brain is oh what if she has a boyfriend what if that boyfriend's gonna kill me what if uh i get judged what if everyone here thinks like this is a stupid thing and then you start creating this bullshit story and this hypothetical situation that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. and then you start reacting to something that doesn't even necessarily exist mm -hmm. to the point where if you even go up and try to say hi, mm -hmm. she's going to meet you at that low vibration of energy mm -hmm. of just like reaction that uh, it, you're, you're just, it's gonna elude you. You, yeah. know, you said uh, Jim Rohn, uh, he said success isn't something that you need to pursue, it's something you get by the person you become, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's the exact same thing with business. The business, a pretty girl, anything of uh, people or men just want to kind of uh, chase. If you have a business and you're just waiting years of, oh, I want to get this started, but I don't know. The first things that come to your mind is what if I lose money? What if I fail again? What if I fail for the fifth time? What if my mom thinks this is a stupid thing? What if mm -hmm. my dad thinks this is a stupid thing? What if I fail and the kids have no idea how to eat? Or what if I accidentally wait, uh, lose all of my money? And mm -hmm. now I have to start at back at one or what if I have to move back at home with my mom and dad? Mm -hmm. And it's all these failures that many people are like, you know what? I'm just going to not do it. And they're just going to yeah. not even like how they wouldn't say hi to that pretty girl. They're not going to start that business. I mean, other than what you just said, other than you can't feed your family or if you're not a parent, but you can't feed your spouse or pay the rent, like the basic necessities mm -hmm. that I completely respect and appreciate. But in terms of like, what are my friends or my family going to think? Or what if it doesn't work? So what? Mm -hmm. So what? And so be be the friend. I, this is my moniker if I ever went online. Be the, the crazy friend in the group that they say, that's our friend who. That's our friend who started a business. That's our friend who moved to another state or another country. That's our friend who did something that totally. Mm -hmm. And what I've come to realize is, is. The reason why my friends were trying to protect me is it scared them. Mm. And um, it's shining a light on whatever they're also going through, right? 
Yes and no. I mean, they all have amazing lives. So I, I'm not, I'm not looking at their life. I'm saying it scared them for me mm. of what could happen to me. I'm not looking at their life, but, and, and it, the only difference is it's unknown to them, mm. you know? So the only thing I would say is like, you know, nobody makes money online. Mm -hmm. No one has any experience with this. They all have offline traditional jobs. They've all worked extremely hard and have, you know, built great businesses for themselves uh, and have wonderful families and all that, but it's unknown. They've never done anything online. So it's probably a scam. You know, you shouldn't go to Asia. Have you been to Asia? No, I haven't been anywhere in Asia. Well, then why am I asking your advice? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and like uh, another great, um, um, Robert Kiyosaki is always like, why would you, with all due respect, I appreciate and respect teachers, but why would you listen to a teacher about how to make money when they have no idea how to make money? Mm. which is why the school system should probably change. And he's yeah. fighting very hard for that. But it's like, why listen to somebody, even if they care deeply about you, even mm. if you share the same bloodline, if they don't have any experience mm. or wisdom, then you just have to ask yourself, where's their opinion coming from? It's coming from fear, or maybe in that case, it's coming from a reflection on themselves that they never did something mm. You know, you know, who knows, but I, you just have to take a shot mm. and you can't worry about the results. Mm. The results are, is that you went through it. And as Shakespeare says, that does not kill you, makes you stronger. You're better for it. Mm. And it's never a failure. Like I said before, I hate that word, but it's a learning experience because I mean, look, Take it down as simple as this. When I first moved here, I didn't know where I was. So I'm always nervous. I'm, I'm listening to the GPS and all that. And then I'm like, I'm gonna start seeing if I know where I'm going. Just because I took a left and I went the wrong way, doesn't mean I can't turn the bike around and go, yeah. <laughs> go the other direction. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was a minor detour. Don't make it a catastrophe. Your life is not over. You ran two ads and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same thing in sales is the same thing in internet marketing, online marketing, or any other type of online type of business is, and I say this to all my salespeople and myself is, we are all farmers. You cannot harvest the day you plant the seed. There needs to be time to hit it with rain and wind and sun. And then one day, sometimes harvests happen quick with some crops. Sometimes it could take three years like me, mm. but the fruit is so much sweeter when it takes longer. I mean, mm. I'm glad I didn't get this younger. I'm glad it's been a struggle and I'm not even close to where I want to be, but it's becoming real. I can see it. Yeah. It reminds me of like what Jim Rohn would say. It's like, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Sometimes you throw seeds and then they get eaten by birds mm. and just like little things like that. But you just kept on sowing and reaping. You kept on sowing and reaping, and even if this opportunity wasn't and it. And failing. And a lot of crops still didn't, figured it out. didn't grow at all. But would you say that being surrounded by the right people started making it better? Because totally. Because it was like we started hanging out, and then Gary, and then now you're like uh, learning from Chris. How, mm -hmm. how has that kind of like influenced everything and the transformation that could have happened? I think it's really important. First of all, it's always important to be with people who are smarter than you in a particular area that you want to grow. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important, not just winning, but like there's a reason why certain people win. Yeah. So it's not about the house or the money mm -hmm. or anything. Yeah. It's, it's totally in the attitude of let's get things done. And when things don't work, how do we pivot quickly? Let's not marinate in I failed and oh, I, I lost a little bit of money and oh, maybe I look stupid. I never hear you guys talk about that stuff. It's always on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Yeah. I mean, that's how you work. When I when you came to that villa, you came on, went in a live stream, boom, 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 on to the next thing. You're not thinking about, oh, I got to make this the perfect and I got to look cool and it was this the right. That's how people get things done. That's how you get to 100, 500, 1,000 posts is just constantly doing it and knowing it'll get better as I get better. And so... I think too many people, and I was one of them three years ago, so I, I totally know where you are. And if anyone is 
on the fence thinking like this right now, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that it's totally fine that you've thought that way, but what if you just stop, think, make a deal, like mm -hmm. you're not gonna change your whole life, just make a deal for the next 30 days, I'm gonna do something that makes me nervous, that makes me insecure, that makes me uncomfortable, because I know that something really good could potentially come out of this. And what's the worst that can happen? And I promise you, if you don't judge yourself, and it's very difficult because I'm very mm -hmm. self-critical, but if you can just turn the volume down on that part and just do the work for 30 days, I'm not talking a radical shift, mm -hmm. I think you'll look back and be like, wow, I, I can't believe that I accomplished this or I learned this. You may not even accomplish anything, mm -hmm. but you'll become more competent. And as you become more competent, you will become more confident. I think a lot of people feel uncomfortable because they feel like secretly that they're a fraud. They don't know anything. I'm not good at anything. I, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to do. I don't know what my skill is. And so they just, they just are, are living with that. And, and it causes anxiety, it causes depression, it causes alcoholism, all this kind of stuff that if you just were really proud of yourself, and again, you don't have to succeed in anyone else's eyes but your own, but if you just do something mm -hmm. and go through feeling uncomfortable, feeling stupid, like learning a foreign language, you're not going to be fluent in the first week. Well, Facebook ads is a foreign language to me. I felt stupid. I still kind of, when you go through things and you click this and do this and do that, I'm like, how do you do that? I still feel stupid, but I just explained to my video team, they're like, what is just, what, what is a funnel and how, and I'm a cocktail napkin at lunch. I explained all that. And that was the first time and explained to them. I'm like, wow, I've really grown in the last year. Yeah. I can now explain it. Like Mr. I'm not Miyagi perfect. You. <laughs> yeah. There's way better people at it than me, but I'm like, I can get, I can explain the whole thing front mm. to back. And so I would just challenge people. I think people are really scared to do radical shifts in their mm -hmm. life. Yeah. yeah. So do micro shifts and build on that. It's like the gym. You don't look at you or your mm. buddy Aaron, who's like 4% body fat and be like, why even start? I have no genetic yeah. advantage. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you're African. <laughs> but he, but, but, but people out there that if you go to the gym five days a week, eat the right foods, in 90 days, you will see in the mirror when you get out of the shower and you look in the mirror, you will see change. Look for the same results in a business. Don't try and get there in a month mm. or two months or three months. Just in the beginning, try to become a craftsman. You know, if someone was a cobbler of shoes in Italy or somebody was trying to build a wall, uh, you know, with stone, it, it takes a while to learn the craft. Mm. And so be willing to do that. Don't think about the money. Think about getting good at something. Then you'll get confidence in something. Mm. And then you'll be able to go, okay, I figured this component out. What is the next thing? And be curious. That was another thing. And yeah. by the way, I know you have a lot of male listeners. So, and I sometimes watch your videos. I'm like, why didn't he finish up that thought? So I'm going to finish up my own thought. And I, I'm no hero at this, but I'm better than I was. But in terms of the talking to girls, there was also a confluence of events, like like with my my business not going well in the industry and then leading to this. Same thing with, with women is I, I would, I mean, I even used to talk to my mom about this. Like, oh, I didn't talk to her. Like she was looking, she was smiling. I kind of think that she, and my mom's like, basically you're an idiot. I mean, <laughs> she would be nicer about it, but she's like, honey, you're a sweet boy. What's the worst that could happen? And you're not going to say anything bad. And I know mom, but maybe, you know, you know, she's like, let her come up with the excuse. You don't have to make one for her. But between that, the stand up, and then I started really, like to practice for for like being on stage, I came up with an exercise where I was gonna talk to every stranger I could. And I've since, and I still do it to this day, and that happened like 15 years ago. I love strangers. There's so yeah. many interesting stories. You never know who you're gonna meet. I've met a ton of amazing people here and all throughout my life talking to strangers, the people that normally you just blow by because you're on your phone or you got something to do. But so then I thought, okay, instead of having an outcome 
with women. I mean, yes, she's attractive. Um, and that's kind of sometimes like the lottery ticket when you're a younger dude, like, okay, if we date here and then we get married and we have kids, like you're doing the whole fantasy just for, thing. Just from like how she looks. Like you yeah, don't even know the girl's personality. So she could be like a shitty human being. Yeah. But like you see the girl and you're just like, yeah. But you're my, like, wow. My needs little... change yeah. though. Yeah. It's not just a pretty face, but I will tell this to all the younger dudes, uh, or the divorced middle-aged dudes who haven't dated in 20 date years. Russians. Um, is just talk. No game. No, none of those tricks. I mean, yeah. I know a lot of those guys talk about that, but that's not authentic. Just here's the best line in the world. Hi. My name is Jason. Sometimes you don't even need that. But just, just be interested for the sake of being interested with no agenda other than mm. being attracted to her. But like you said, find out. And by the way, with the confidence thing, it's not being a, a jerk or having an ego. It's valuing yourself that you know that you're a catch and trying to almost qualify like in an interview of, is this person worth mm. my time? Because if you're thinking about, you know, there's only one of me and there's plenty of them. And same thing with women looking at men too. Same thing is. Or men looking at men. Women or men looking, looking at, at women. women. This, is, like a, this is a free world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love is love. Love is love. Love is love. I'm all for it. But I'm just saying. That's nice. I'm just saying no intention. Yeah. Just talk, smile, and don't worry mm. about it. And by the way, don't worry about it. And I learned this from Sharna Halpern at Improv Olympic in 1994 that everything you need is in front of you. That was my first improv teacher who was amazing. Um, everything you need in a conversation is right in front of you. You don't need to come up with some crazy, like really funny or really interesting or clever. Mm. It's right there in front of you. The same thing in business, the same thing with someone you want to try and talk to to date. Everything you need is right there. Yeah, it's all the same. Just talk. Um, and, and bringing it back to like the ending thoughts of things, now that you've... Okay been through all of this and yes. you've um experienced it you've learned from some of the top mm -hmm. marketers in the world like above ground and also like underground True. like behind the scenes and stuff like that yeah um what would you do knowing what you know now if we took your brain and we transfuse it we put it in like a time machine and then we just like basically hijacked the jason of last year when he was just trying to like make money like making watching all these youtube videos mm -hmm. just trying to figure out a way to either make an extra income on the side to really like fund the life that you want mm -hmm. how would you then get started with making money knowing what you know now knowing what i know now and knowing and one thing and working on the, on the inside specifically well the first thing is do the research yeah no, this is, this is, I'm not talking about like advice that you would give. I'm talking about you, you what, know, what would I do differently? Yeah. No, not what you would do differently, but you've learned so many different business models. Yes. You've learned so many ways of making money online. I don't want to talk more really about like hypotheticals. I'm like, yeah. okay, action steps. Yeah. I'm go like, I would literally do X, Y, and Z because like W, Z, Z, X told me to, and I saw the results from like W, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm torn because I see I see the benefit of of two business models yeah. that I love, which are I think the the faster money if that's the way you're going to talk about it, and the easier to learn and apply, I I think is the the Chris Winter's method of or or I mean there there I'm sure there are others but I I've been watching and studying Chris and I think he's got it dialed in which is just yeah, he's smart lead yeah he's super smart and he's a great teacher and he just he, he already eaten knows. a carb in like 20 years yeah that's mm -hmm. probably what it's happens. unbelievable yeah but i just think that his model but i'm sure lead gen in general i just i've never done research on lead gen i listened to your podcast with him i had met him once i i everyone that i know that i respect respected him so therefore i was like i'm gonna listen to this guy and as soon as the program came out and as soon as he's like, I'm going to give you my personal WhatsApp number, I'm like, 
oh my, I, I hope I can get my money and I, I couldn't use my credit card over here. So I had to wire money to yeah. you guys. Mm-hmm. And I was that? like, I, I, was like, like, I this guy that. wants to wire money. I I I mean, like, On the five it. spots, I'm like, I'm going to be crushed if I can't. Yeah. Like, if you're going to spend a, a thousand, spend the six, 1600 and get Chris. I mean, that's crazy. Which, by the way, is another thing is like, if you ever have an opportunity to spend a little money to get closer to the guru, mm-hmm. whoever that is. Yeah. Spend the money. Mm-hmm. You'll get it back. You want to get as close and you want to get in their ear. Now that I mean, I flew all the way across the country or yeah. the world, excuse me, to do that. Mm-hmm. If it costs you an extra thousand not to fly and stay home, then you should do it. But I think lead gen in any business, good times, especially bad times. Um, there's a million types of businesses. Knowing, being a small business owner myself at one point, knowing that you just can't learn one more thing so you can be the angel. It's like when you try to sell them a product or a service, they're always like, oh. But when they have so much pain and you're the solution, it's so much more fun Mm -hmm. to be their hero as opposed to just some other vendor trying to Mm. sell them on something, but selling them something that they actually need. Um, is great. So I think that the lead gen is a great business model. I know people doing really well in SEO. I don't know that much about it. I know the general gist of it, but I don't mm-hmm. know the, about the strategies, but I know that a lot of people find that to be very mm-hmm. good. With uh, the lead gen, um, because yeah. I also want to say this point because we just got off the phone with another one of like our successful students mm-hmm. and she was also doing it like you. Um, she didn't really resonate with all of the flash, all mm-hmm. of like the young kids making money. She was literally single mother that has a 10 year old daughter mm-hmm. that wanted to just do this on the side of her like accounting job. Mm-hmm. So that maybe like what Jim Rohn always talks about, make, tw- uh, work on your profits and you do on your wages until you make twice as much working part time on your profits and you make full time on your wages and, um, and stuff like that. So you're literally building this on the side of still like working mm-hmm. um, and full like time. giving like full time. And I've seen you work, man. Your like work ethic is insane. Or like when we go to events, I see you like moving mm-hmm. the things like for the Never events set. that we would do. Yeah, you would do a lot of things. So building this on the side mm-hmm. for anybody that's listening mm-hmm. is always gonna like hit a chord of, wow, you know, I, I want that freedom, but I just don't have the time, you know? Mm-hmm. I have a kid, I have a, um, like a spouse that I have to take care of. Yeah. I have a, like a full-time job and like my boss is on my ass all the yeah. time. So what has been your experience, for example, like in the community um, that is provided that mm-hmm. maybe have made things a little bit easier, at least gave you more comfort knowing that, okay, like I could literally go at this at my own pace and I know that I'll yeah. still be helped. doesn't matter how long. Well, I'll tell you a lot of those ex- reasons, I don't want to call them excuses, I think are legit. Yeah. I think a lot of people are stressed out. I think they're working really hard. Um, and I do believe that it, at the core, that's very relevant. Mm-hmm. However, I would push back slightly. And if I were a good friend of yours, I'd probably push back a little more to say, how much time do you watch TV? How much time yeah. do you watch a football game? How much time do you you know spend on social media? Like... I don't love going to the gym and I always, oh, I'm too busy, but yeah. I'll spend an hour doing something that is not directly for work mm-hmm. related. And then I'll sit there and regret and I'll beat myself up a little bit of like, oh man, that was my gym time. Yeah. And uh, so those are legitimate reasons and, ex- you know, for not having the time, but just be real with yourself. You don't have to admit it to anyone else, yeah. but is that truly? The- and I think the other thing is knowing what I know now of, seeing all you guys work and by the way not everything you guys do actually works but you're working you're mm-hmm. trying you're throwing things out there we're just throwing shit at the wall and yeah. saying wood sticks all the 300 time. gets you into the baseball hall of fame yeah so mm-hmm. you just got to keep trying because you don't it's like someone saying oh we, we need this mm-hmm. video to go viral well the audience decides mm-hmm. that we don't decide that and so you're not going to know if you put all your eggs in one basket and this one video has got to be the thing and it doesn't, it's going to be soul crushing as opposed to you put out 30 videos and one hits. Yeah, You don't even know why it hit, but you're just grateful, but you did 30. So I Mm -hmm. think working with you guys, being around you guys all the time, seeing that it's, it's a constant conveyor belt of let's get this out, get this Mm -hmm. out, get that out. 
Just shit. Like a conveyor belt of just shit on the wall. Yeah. Oh, look, that sticks. Oh, damn. That just like dropped. Yeah. But you all believe in all of them. Yeah. You love all your children equally. You're just not <laughs> sure. Besides that one children. You except that one problem child. It's like that dog that you have that you love, but it's like, it's a street dog mm. out here. I hear you. You feed them like pissy. Mm. Like Hanson has a dog pissy. They rescued, got hit by a car. Right. Um, he got hit again. Ooh. Again. Oh, no. Yeah. So he three times. Keeps on peeing everywhere. So too. he's, so he has like issues with his, yeah. So when he gets hit or he's stressed, he like drips pee mm. and he just like all over our place. But we love him. It's he's like a metaphor basically about took life. him in. And yeah. yeah. There's so many here too. Yeah. But with that being said, like, but, cause you, so my thing is uh, to answer your question is once you can get over the time yeah. issue or finding that, and it doesn't take as much time as you think. But I think the other thing is that, you know, if, if you give me any credibility that I'm for real and you're putting yourself in my shoes of, you know, what would it be like is you can have back home whatever I have here. And that's kind of like I had to fly 9,000 miles to realize yeah. that, you know, it's a, uh, uh, mm. what was that movie? The Yellow Brick Road. Like, yeah, like you had the ability Wizard to be of Oz. Ba- Wizard of Oz. Like you could have been back in Kansas. <laughs> what if you wake up and you're actually still in Los LA? Angeles? In the hotel. In the hotel. <laughs> in, the hotel. <laughs> in the hotel, you maybe like. 250 pounds. 250 pounds. <laughs> like, that was just a dream. Yeah. That was just a dream yeah. this past year. Those fuckers. <laughs> Fatter and grayer. Yeah. Um, but what I would say is being around you guys, yeah. it's infectious to be with people who are productive. Yeah, man. People who are actually getting stuff done. Mm, yeah. Like a no excuses, you know, yeah, zone yeah. of just learning how to to enjoy a little bit of the chaos and not be like, oh man, it's- Oh, I love the chaos. It's just but like- chaos <sighs> is where great stuff happens. But just when I, this is really where my belief started because everything was like, you're online, you're at arm's length. Mm-hmm. I, I'm hoping you guys are for real. I'm not sure if you're real. And now <laughs> being here and seeing you guys doing it day after day and putting out all kinds of content um, is- it being around that, it, it basically, if you're being around people who are, um, it, who are always motivated and who are always positive and who are always taking action, who are always trying things, and then, you know, the worst case is if something flops, your friends make fun of you, you move on because real friends support you at the end of the day. They give you shit, but yeah, that, that's their way of showing love, at least for men. Mm-hmm. But, but at the end of the day, everyone wants the same thing. Mm-hmm. So. If you could imagine yourself like, I think the reason why people don't mm-hmm. is because they're afraid of trying because they don't know if it's real or they don't know if they can mm-hmm. succeed or whatever the case may be. Or if, oh, well, if I get to this stage, but then the next stage, the next stage. But if you could act as if, you know, the kind of the fake it till you make it is act as if you believe in what you're learning. Act as if that you are going to figure it out, whether it takes you three tries or 30 tries that nothing is going to get in your way and try and get around people who are not just existing and, and uh, complaining. Mm -hmm. I think that that also can take you down the wrong path. And I think just being around a bunch of doers is, uh, is really made me feel like, okay, these guys are, they're, they're walking the talk. They're doing what they say that they're doing. It it is definitely for real, mm. and so I think that would be my best advice: is what if I promised you whatever you were going to choose to try out there? What if mm. I promised you through all the ups and downs, and success is not a straight line, but if you could ride the bull for eight seconds all the way, if I promised you at the end you'd win the gold trophy, mm. would you be more likely to stick with it in the beginning? Because if we can erase the doubt. And I'm talking to myself, not, I'm not selling anyone, but this is really how I had to take myself through the step by step is if you could just assume you're a winner and you could assume that I don't care what life throws at me, I'm, I'm going to get up one more time that I'm knocked down. I don't care how long it's going to take. I know this is important and I'm going to win at this thing. And again, winning to me is proficiency. It's not money. Cause if you're proficient, the money will come. And it's like really who you just become yeah. in the process. It's like yeah. what you said, and I'm going to relate this back at dating again, because like, okay. this is just like what we learn all the time when I like took all of these like confidence boot camps classes. You did? Yeah, dude. So many like, have you read this book, bro? 
Mm-hmm. Like, there's literally a chapter about, like, my love life. And then, like, talking about me going through Vegas and living there for, like, 30 days and just working on my confidence. But they said, if you just knew at the end of the night that the the girl of your dreams would be there waiting for you mm-hmm. and is, like, rooting you, like, Mike, you know, I'm, like, right here. And she wants to, like, be with you. The only caveat is throughout the entire night even if you don't see her till then you just need to have the most fun and you just need to enjoy the process Mm -hmm. and you need to really just collaborate and bring like all the people around you like this positive energy and upbeat vibe it doesn't matter if it's like a pretty girl or someone's grandma or like some dude you know just like like everyone's just having a good time and if i could tell you that as long as you do that she's literally there waiting for you it's the exact same thing in business. It's like that dream life that you want is there and it's literally like waiting for you on a platter. Mm-hmm. You just have to like enjoy the process. Like what you said, just fall in love and almost surrendering to kind of like the opportunities mm-hmm. and to kind of like get rid of any bullshit excuse that might be happening and instead almost like follow your intuition mm-hmm. and just follow the people that have the results that you want. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to like become their friends, man. Like we're like homies. You you tell me shit all the time. Like like I love the advice he gives me. He's like, Mike, I'm gonna give you some advice. Like no filters, <laughs> unsolicited, this, unsolicited. <laughs> he never I'm asked just for like it. I'm like literally. Sometimes I'll be like in the bathroom and I come out. He's like, Mike, you're about to speak. I need to tell you this is gonna be the fucking biggest speech of your life. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> Don't fuck this up for me. Don't. I'm like, what? <laughs> you got this, Dude, bro. Like me. And then and it's honestly been some of the most amazing thing because what. What people need to realize is these people that you look up to on the internet or on these video stuff is, dude, we're all normal human beings mm-hmm. and we shouldn't be put, be put on a pedestal. The beautiful thing I love about you is you didn't put me on a pedestal and I've gotten so much amazing advice from you, man. Like from you teaching me that, yo, I need to chill because I'm like 25 and I still have the rest of my life and I'm just like freaking out because like I'm not like, you know, at the Gary Vee or Grant Cardone level and just you just calming me down and be like, dude, you're 25, bro. Fucking relax. You're, you're, you're just enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. Have like, have like, have fun at the club with the grandma and you know that like that girl is like waiting for you. It's been amazing and even like before speaking on stages how you just like drop me in and realize like, dude, you know, like, can, can you just like hone in on like what because some of the advice you give me is like amazing man the unsolicited advice where does that come from is it just something that you notice or um because every single time you give me advice it just hits and you're just someone that literally a year ago was just watching a video on youtube that we didn't know each other i i think it comes i mean it's partially of being a people pleaser and also being like I have information yeah. that can help in this situation. And whether you want it or not, I'm going to give it to you. I love it. You don't have to take it. But it also is like, you know, I want people to succeed. Yeah. You know, like, again, it comes back to abundance. Because you succeed doesn't take anything away from me. It makes me just want to serve you more. I mean, yeah. So, but, but again, giving for the sake of wanting something in return is not giving. Giving to give talking to someone to talk without mm. wanting to get a phone number don't have any more expectations as in then it's not it's not it's genuine mm. yeah, yeah it's not a means to an end and if you can just do that i mean for me and we don't hang out a lot socially you know but besides a double date that's so a double date and that was at mm. midnight but i mean for you to say that as a compliment to me it, it makes me feel good selfishly because mm. it's like good i had a small little piece that help but it's like i i i think just again and i think most older people can is um you can recognize moments because we've been to the rodeo a few times Mm -hmm. and i could tell that this stage speech for you was really important i mean the stage was perfect the event was perfect the screen was amazing it was a million dollar screen the students were incredible and open and just the right type of Mm -hmm. people who like i said they all had the right why of why they wanted to Mm -hmm. succeed in their lives half of them came from the ty lopez scam video yeah (laughs) and uh you know and it was like just a perfect moment because i really see you i mean i do think that youtube was built for people like you Mm. but i also think that the stage is built for people like you as well and so i was in my mind even though i still haven't found like the right agent for you to do those um speaking engagements but i mean 
you, and I mean this in a good way, you are a hype master. You get people, <laughs> you get people in a good mood instantly. Mm. And it comes out very genuine. And I've seen you do it when there's not a camera on you and you're the exact same way. Um, come on, we're all going to go to this beach club and we're going to, you know, watch the sunset and get this killer meal and all this stuff. And like, where's the camera? Oh, there's no camera. Oh, he actually means it. It's really you. So, but I do think that stage is that way. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm playing chess. If he can knock it out of the park here with this audience to give him the right feedback, like a comedian getting a joke, getting a laugh, then he can use that to submit to agents to get mm. booked at other events around the world. So I'm like, and quite frankly, I don't think anyone else in the room could give you the advice at that moment that I could just based on my experience. So I felt it was my duty. I mean, I don't really work with you, so yeah. to speak, or work for you, but but I know you're in that family. And so oh, I care as much. It's a great family. I'm I'm I care about you and your success as much as anyone else's. And and quite frankly, and I say this with everyone on you haven't done a damn thing for me except open this opportunity. <laughs> so I don't want anything. But this hey, opportunity I watched the was video. more than this enough. This was a four-minute <laughs> no, no, no. video. It was a four-minute video. You started this whole chain of events. But, you know, it's not like I've said, hey, can you teach me about ads or how do you do this or how do you do that? But I should teach you to that one Indonesian girl, though. So that's like pretty. You did. And I went home <laughs> alone that night. So thanks a lot. <laughs> that's a hell of a birthday present I gave myself. But anyway. Um, I'm so close. But I, I just, again, it's just like. The bottom line is don't let your fears take over mm. your decisions. Mm. It's okay to have fear. What do they say? The definition of courage is having fear and doing it anyway. Yeah. Be your own biggest fan. Don't care about what's going to happen. Mm. And if you have that burning desire, and I think most human beings have this is, and I suffer from this. Um, I've gotten better at it, but I still suffer from this. I'm capable of more. I know I'm capable of more. I am not the best version of me, and that's why I do all these stupid things at night on the weekends and then mm. make excuses, and then, then it's just a perpetual, you know, mm. thing that I can't get out of. But if you can if you can shake that up mm. and try something different and get uncomfortable and just do it for 30 days, and then after you see, oh, it, it kind of worked a little bit, do it 30 more. Don't make – it's like a diet. If I'm never going to have sugar again, you're never going to – you have to Succeed. like, you need to have that steps. You need to enjoy the process. Yeah. And you just need to get guided. And I, I want to actually like talk about this. You're, you're going through this right now. This yeah. is literally Chris's stuff. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, which like, what has been your experience just going through this? My, well, my experience is it, it all makes so much sense. Like all my, my spidey sense, my, yeah. my normal, like business and, mindset. Just not that, not just that, but but like, okay, I'm always trying to find where's where's the angle here. Yeah, you never want to be the sucker. Yeah. you know, like if you don't know what, what's that saying in Vegas, like if you don't know who the sucker is at the table, it's you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be that sucker. You don't want to feel like a stooge. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm always just a little bit, and I think most people are like this. They're just like a little bit hesitant of okay, let me find out why this doesn't work especially with like online courses because there's so much bullshit out there yeah. you know yeah. and it's like five or ten minutes okay like i'm hyped i want to buy but like we've been talking for like an hour or two there's like the podcast you heard with me and gary with my phone recording was like 40 minutes mm -hmm. it's almost like hard to bullshit that long yeah and you start seeing like the real selves yeah and seeing if they can actually deliver yeah for sure by the way on a total tangent I have this crazy theory and, and I don't know because I don't, I don't live online. I don't have any channels of my yeah. own. I mean, I have a Facebook account. Should we all have everyone add you as a friend? But I, <laughs> no, you had a, you had a YouTube influence. channel, bro. One subscriber. Maybe we should just link that in. Uh, yeah, I think I created a different one, but I don't yeah. have any videos and I created one an Instagram yeah. and I, and I don't, I, I have dog and rice field yeah. photos. Now I'm not actually doing anything about it, but I'm totally behind the scenes, but I do have, uh, a theory about internet trolls. I believe that a good percentage of them could actually be really successful if they tried. Yeah. Because if they will sit there and watch a 45 minute video and rip on stuff and get granular and detailed, I'm like, if you could just apply that mm -hmm. power for good, you could actually, mm -hmm. you could actually succeed. 
I think a lot of the troll stuff is not people just being mean or evil. Mm-hmm. I think it's frustrated people who don't know. Maybe I'm naive, but it, they don't know what to do or where to go. And so it's always easier to go negative than it is to go positive. Yeah, well, they're just like playing the victim mentality, right? When people are literally being like, yo, there's everything that you need is here. And yeah. like, for example, this is just one case, right? Because there's so many other yeah. of like uh, my mentors and their stuff. But it's mm-hmm. like people have already created the blueprint yeah. for you, you, you know? Um, and in terms of like ease, because I'm just thinking, like I said, for Becky from Oklahoma, that's just chilling there with a single... Uh, I'm totally rooting for Becky, by the yeah, way. I'm totally rooting and, for and Becky. And Becky, I swear in my Becky, life, this is stick with it. It's real. <laughs> you can do it. Well, what has been something that has been helpful with this? Because I know this is what you're currently going yes. through right now. Um, in terms of like your experience, you uh, ease of use, the community. Totally easy use. The business model makes sense. And it's literally, and this is the best way I like to learn is bite size. Yeah. And it's bite-sized pieces of first you're going to do this, then you're going to do this, and then you're going to do this. And the other thing that I really love is this is why we do this. Mm. This is why we do. So both sides of my brain are fed. My creativity and my logic is, okay, now I make mm. it makes sense. Sometimes I don't want to do something until you can explain to me logically why. And this program does it. So without getting into all the modules, one, yeah, there's a lot. everything is totally laid out. And if you go through it, everything makes sense. Any question you possibly have, Chris has already thought about it because he's already been living this for 10 years. Yeah, that's like the difference, right? Because most people yeah. are like, oh, I got one client. I'm going to go create a course, you know? Yeah. And then you get this course and you're like, shit, this fucker doesn't know what he's talking about. That's why there's too many people selling stuff. Yeah. Like Chris is a guy and there's guys like him too. I mean, same thing, Grant Cardone. There are guys that sit in the shadows and just do the work mm-hmm. before the social media, before they try and monetize their system. They're just doing the thing that they're teaching. No personal brand. No personal brand. Yeah. That's what blew my mind because I was like, I think you need a personal brand to succeed. But then I'm like, I met Chris and I'm like, how much you make? And he's like, I make a million a month. It's one business. And I'm yeah. like, well, if we make this, would we be your number one business? He's like, well, I have to think about that. He has like so much freaking cash flows. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how? Like, you know, like you, you like on your Instagram, it's just you and a bunch of like pictures of your abs and you don't mm-hmm. even tell anything about like, well, you do, but it's it's not like the main thing, right? Yeah. It blows my mind. I think more people need to realize that you don't need to be like this freaking Beyonce or Kim Kardashian make money. You could literally be mm-hmm. Becky from Oklahoma, like single mother, like rent $1,000 a month. You're pulling in maybe $1,500. Mm-hmm. You're maybe below on bills. You're cash flow negative, maybe negative $200 a month, but you could still freaking do this. You don't need to have a social media account. No, you don't have to stick a camera in your face. No one has to know who you are other than your clients. Yeah. You don't have to become a you YouTube star. You don't even star. need to have so many clients, you know? No. 2,000 a client? Yeah. I mean, how many clients do you need? Well, and then my sister, like, lives in Chiang Mai, so she's, like, literally doing this, too, and mm-hmm. she just needs literally a handful of clients that she just hangs out with 15 minutes a day or something, and then she just spends the rest of her time, you know, doing salsa dancing in Muay Thai and she, she's coming up, dude, Angelique Castile. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But I, I would, I would say going through this and I haven't finished it all. Um, <clears throat> just total transparency, but everything that you need in the order that you need it, there's hardly any questions. And by the way, and again, I just, my personal experience, I have no affiliation with them other than I'm their customer. But, um, you know, like I've had a few just little thing questions, customer service right back to you. Again, just they're a first rate company. So that I believe he's living, he's living it. But when you go through the, the, the training, it just, it all makes sense Mm -hmm. and it's really easy. So the training is really like, how do you craft an ad? How do you set up a Facebook ad account? How do you, you know, make, the page, mm-hmm. you know, the landing page. I don't know if your audience knows, but like, how do you make the page? How do you reach out to the client? What do you say to the client? Mm-hmm. And then how do you do the thing that they're going to pay you for? Done. That's it. That's the whole program. There's not all these bells and whistles. There's no insurance that you need. There's no bank loan. There's no social media part. You don't have to hire a bunch of people to do any of this stuff. You use their money to run the ads. Yeah. 
<laughs> and by the way, what is it? Five or ten bucks a day? Yeah, and it's not your five or ten dollars. No, it's their money. Yeah. So but, yeah, I feel like too many people complain. People just to me, it's the lowest hanging fruit for anyone. And for those people that are super busy, put one hour a day, five hours a week. Stick it all on a Saturday if you're busy working, and and give it ninety days. You get two days. clients. You get two clients to pay you two k a month. That's an extra four k a month. Yeah, you know that that's more than most. That's like as a part time thing. That's what I'm like so freaking passionate about because mm-hmm. like I'm start like as I talk to more people um, instead of just talking to a camera, you start like really empathizing what they're actually going through, right? And people don't care about making millions. No. They just want some freedom. Yeah. And I, I feel like the more we can have these authentic conversations and just share and really just now like un- unravel the veil mm-hmm. to the world, then more people could really just do the thing that it is that they want to do. And it, most times it's just be with their family, mm-hmm. do the things that they love, go freaking scuba diving, which we can do. We can do that tomorrow, bro. Mm-hmm. You just want to go scuba diving? Maybe yeah. we should like vlog that. Totally want to scuba um, dive. But yeah, man, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. I definitely want to get you on here as much as possible because it's like this. I love this conversation. You you love it, right? I could keep going. You keep on going. Well, the thing about this is like (laughs) we're literally recording our own memories and we're almost like gifting each other Mm -hmm. memories that we almost forgot that we had. Yeah. As well as sharing stories that we didn't know. Realizations in the moment. Amazing, dude. And that's what I'm saying. Like we're literally going all all in and just having these authentic conversations. Hanson, how are you feeling, bro? I feel good, man. You want to say anything? These conversations get more and more deep and, and authentic, and everyone gets so comfortable. Oh. I think you turned me off. Yeah, my bad, bro. I See, this is, why, this is why I don't handle it. Remember? But I, I wanted like, to add to yours, your comment on, like, being around people that, like, literally do not stop. Mm-hmm. And, like, being around Mike, dude, it's infectious. It's, like, even if you are not coming from somewhere where you're, like, consistent, like, they don't let you have those thoughts mm-hmm. in your head because you're sur- everyone's just like act, you know? Yeah. And so you're influenced by this and, um, it, yeah, like your own insecurities don't get in your own head and you're just freaking next one, next, next, next. Like mm-hmm. we're pumping out these videos and it's super fun to get into that groove. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So literally sur- surround yourself with people that can like lift you up into, uh, being the person you want to be and you just hit the ground running. He's so busy. You don't have time mm-hmm. to judge. Exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. So now what we should do now before we like end with the outro is we should just like think of like a good clickbaity thing and and then we show everyone how how we find the clickbait. So, so you came <laughs> in from here, right? Uh, these are so fun, especially when we start mixing and matching people. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what would be a good clickbait you think for this? Um, Flying it, a subscriber out to Jakarta. It could also be like how to. Um, Get your dream job in Bali with a four minute video or something. Like that. <laughs> what 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 is like the what would you literally type when you got started? Well, what would I call this? Like, what would you? I mean, the what would you type? Thing would be dreams do come true. Dreams definitely do come true. What were the questions that you would ask YouTube search, and then we could like base around that? For me, I was doing like a year ago internet marketing. So you mm-hmm. literally were my biggest Ty search. Um, Either Ty Lopez or internet marketing. Oh, you literally just typed in internet marketing? Yeah. Online marketing, internet marketing. What is like the mm. shit that comes up? Oh, this is all in. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, hmm. um, Are you looking for a keyword? Yeah, we're looking for a keyword. And then we also just like show this to you. So anyone that wants to do YouTube, they could see how we find the videos and then how to basically make them. These are all in like fucking Indonesian. Let me go check. Oh, okay. I mean, are you talking about... What are we talking about today? What would be are you like talking about lead gen or are you talking about the overall conversation? Just the overall conversation. Overall like, conversation um, but like the we, secret we, to... How to make it happen for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out maybe later. Yeah. Uh, we could just do uh, the one with the Ty Lopez. Okay. <laughs>